I'm a fourth year uh, medical student in the English module. Um, in uh, today we're going to talk about a case report about a phenomenal relapse after gamma knife surgery. So we're going to have a little bit of introduction about uh, gamma knife surgery and about the nature of the tumor that we're going to talk about today and then we'll go through the case presentation and finally we will talk about the discussions. So first of all, the uh, genoma. Uh, genoma is a nerve chief tumor composed of Schwann cells uh, that cover the neurons and uh, that tumor the Schwann cells normally produce the insulating myelin sheet covering the peripheral nerves. So when you have an abnormal growth of those cells, you get a phenoma. This is what a malignant phenoma looks like. Our case today is not a malignant phenoma, it's a benign one. It's a vestibular phenoma. So it's a benign primary intracranial tumor of the myelin-forming cells of the vestibular cochlear nerve or the eighth uh, cranial nerve, which is also known as the acoustic neuroma, acoustic neuronoma, or acoustic neurolimoma. So all of those are names for a vestibular phenomenon. This is the tumor for uh, our patient today. Then uh, we'll be talking about gamma knife surgery. What is so special about the gamma knife surgery? Gamma knife surgery uses 3D positioning tools to shoot a dose of radiation directed towards the tumoral cells that we have. And because of, uh, because of it's not invasive, it's a non-invasive procedure, uh, it is used to um, get rid of brain tumors. It's also used for other tumors, but the focus on using this tool in our presentation today will be on brain tumors. Uh, the radiation can be also directed to cause lesions that will hinder somehow the development of other brain disorders. So the uh, device looks like a wheel. There's another half here beneath the head of the patient and there are coils, a lot of coils, metal coils, that concentrate certain uh, radiation passing through uh, cobalt and those radiations will be targeted with a machine to the tumoral mass that we have in order to eliminate it. That uh, procedure can take from 30 minutes to 3 hours, 1 or 3 or uh, 1, 2, 3 or more sessions depending on the size of the tumor found in the brain. Uh, what those radiations do is that they distort or destroy the DNA of the tumoral cells and that will cause them to stop to grow. Um, so, what are the advantages of using gamma knife surgery? So, it involves no incisions, so they're non-invasive. They can be used to treat uh, very hard cases or inoperable cases in case the surgery will be very inv invasive to reach a deep tumor. Gamma knife surgery can be used in that case. Um, there is a greatly reduced chance to damage any nearby structures due to the uh, preciseness of the uh, directed radiation. It doesn't require general anesthesia compared to uh, open surgery, which of course requires anesthesia. Uh, they are performed in a single session um, if uh, the tumor is relatively small and in an outpatient settings. So uh, there is no patient discomfort and the patient uh, will not have a long um, after surgery hospital stay. Uh, now we start talking about our case. So our case is a 52 year old female patient uh, in 2017, that's when uh, I saw the patient. The patient was firstly admitted in 2006 in the emergency, emergency hospital of Bagnus Arsene in Bucharest uh, with left facial paralysis and Parkinson's disease. 
the investigations back then, they showed that there is a, a vestibular sonoma. It was partially resected uh, through a subtle intracapsular resection with a retromastoidian surgical approach in October 2006. Then, later in the same year, in December, the patient came back to the hospital again with uh, worsening of her uh, symptoms and the investigation showed that there was a relapse. At that time, gamma knife radiation therapy was used to ablate the tumor and the tumor was removed with the statement of a favorable post-surgical evolution. So even after the, the patient was uh, treated, uh, it was mentioned to her and in her report that there is a favorable uh, recurrence of the tumor. In 2011, the patient came back again to the hospital with, again, same symptoms, along with hearing loss in the left ear and an increase in the visual acuity of both eyes. And indeed there was a relapse of the tumor along with a peritumoral system. Now here we can see uh, those are in 2006 as you can see the tumor and those are in 2011 again and here we have the uh, results in 2014 right there this is in 2014. Uh, the last surgery that was performed uh, on the patient was for with uh, a retromastoidian approach. So what happens is that we will have a suboccipital craniectomy, durotomy, removing the dura matter, CSF release from the parion magnum, and then the tumor was debulked internally. Uh, the internal auditory canal was drilled and then the tumor was dissected. Following the resection, the internal auditory canal was waxed and a fat graft was placed there in order to preserve it. And a watertight pericranial graft was soon and a mesh was placed in order to keep the contents in place. The muscle and the skin layers were closed. Uh, the tumor that was found was British gray, well delimitated, relatively homogeneous, with the dimensions of about 3, 4, 3 centimeters, and the total, excision, uh, the total excision of the tumor was performed. Um, after that, hemostatic patches were applied, and the osteotom uh, osteotomized bones were uh, placed back in place along with epidural external drainage. Uh, and now uh, the patient uh, comes every year for a checkup uh, in order to see and assess her state with a relative improvement of her symptoms with the hearing loss and the visual acuity. Of course, there are other factors along with her uh, Parkinson's disease that affects her syndrome as well. But um, till now, the tumor relapse was controlled. Uh, the idea here is that even with the safety and the precision and the effectiveness of the gamma knife surgery, the tumor relapse was not prevented after the second uh, time because uh, the main factor here is the nature and the evolutionary course of the initial tumor itself as um, the recurrence rate of the tumor depends of its uh, nature. For example, uh, tumors, uh, brain tumors or melanomas, for example, have a higher recurrence rate that corresponds with a higher lifespan. While uh, tumors with a lower recurrence rate correspond with a lower lifespan as well, which is a bit uh, uh, controversial if you think about it because if you have a brain tumor and you use gamma knife surgery, which is a safe procedure in order to eliminate the tumor, and that tumor has a higher recurrence rate, 
uh, it will occur in a shorter period of time and the lifespan of the patient will be less either than more which is not what you want to achieve in the first place so it's a bit um, tricky because uh, here, if you think about it, using gamma knife surgery is also a bit costly or expensive as I checked here in Romania it's about 19,000 uh, run so uh, compared to other uh, operations it's a bit more expensive and in that case it goes back to the patient so even though gamma knife surgery is uh, very safe very precise, technologically advanced. The advantage of using it in neurosurgery is not uh, uh, very well established from my point of view. These are my references, and thank you so much for your attention. If you have any questions. For the medical school tutorials, you should click on that link, Med for Free, and for the high school tutorials, you should click on the other link, EDU for Free. Again, I thank you for watching and see you next time.